guys, welcome to another video. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to make this really cool cow. As you can see, it has a V to it as well. So it's gorgeous when you put it up into your jacket, it's going to keep your chest warm. If you're like me and feel the cold, you'll know that you've got to keep the chest warm and the neck warm and everything else warm during winter. This is a beginner project. It uses half double crochet stitch. You could use a single crochet or a double crochet if you prefer that one. It is perfect for practicing increasing. And then we are going to work in rows and also in the round. So if you haven't done those things yet, this is the great beginner project for that. There will be a written pattern for this and I will leave the link that you need in the description box. This is below or to the side of the video. The yarn that I've used in this project is from redheart.com. This is the unforgettable yarn and I think it's in the dragonfly colorway. So this would look amazing in any of those really slow color changing yarns like the unforgettable yarn which is what I'm wearing now. Um, it would also look really great in a solid color and even variegated. Let's face it, this project would look great in all colors. This is about a DK or a really light worsted yarn, but it can also be made in thinner yarn and also thicker yarn. So let's get started on the lesson. For your supplies, we're going to need a pair of scissors. We're going to need a crochet hook to go with your yarn. You want to use a crochet hook that is bigger than the recommended crochet hook. That's a lot of crochet hooks. <laughs> You want to use a bigger one that's recommended for your yarn because we want a nice drape. If we use one that's, I think this might actually recommend a six millimeter. Let's have a look. Yeah, it does actually recommend a six millimeter. I have loose tension, and this is more like it's sort of thick and thin. There's thicker bits, you can see a thick bit there, and then a thin bit. So a, a six millimeter, um, that's a J, I think. So this is around about an eight ply or a double knit yarn, but then it has the little thicker sections as well. If you're using double knit or eight ply, I would recommend a five or a five point five. If you're using worsted weight yarn, I would recommend probably a seven or something like that. So this one is the Red Heart Unforgettable. It's a gorgeous colour. What's the name of this one? It's called Dragonfly. It's 100% acrylic, it's, but it's really soft. It's not scratchy like some acrylics can be. It's really lovely. And look at the colours. That's yeah, better end. Look at those gorgeous, gorgeous colours. This one, I cannot remember the name of it. It is a red heart yarn. I will put the name of it across the screen with text. This is all I had left from this one. This wasn't enough to go around one more time. I was playing yarn chicken, so I had to pull out the yarn, the last row. But that's what for this one. And it's a glittery purples, and it's got sort of a reddy purple there. It's really, really pretty. It's got lighter purples. So that's all I had left from that. And that was just one ball of yarn. So this is great if you've just got that odd ball of yarn laying around. I know that we've probably all got one of those. And I'm going to be using this. And I have heard people say that the unforgettable yarns don't pull very well from the middle. I'm going to use my theory. Look, put your fingers in like that. And looser end. So one's going to be tightly wound. One's going to be loose. We're going to go into the looser end. And we're going to grab the middle. Think that person who ever told me that info was right yeah that is not gonna work <laughs> so I'm not gonna force that I'm gonna put that back in there and I'm gonna undo it from the outside I cannot remember who gave me that I think it was on your Facebook page that advice don't do the unforgettable balls from the inside yep totally agree now because that was not gonna work that was gonna get very ugly and we would have had yarn vomit everywhere. So this project is worked from the bottom of the point up. So we're going to make a slip knot. Let's um, just having a look at my pattern. Actually, I think a magic ring is going to work a lot better. 
So you could could use a slip knot if you're not comfortable with using a magic ring. And if you're going to use a slip knot, you're going to chain three or four and join. Just to make a little loop, but I'm going to use the magic ring instead. So I'm just going to pull my yarn up. And we're using a half double crochet for this project. You can use a single crochet if you like. The double crochet in this project it makes the, the bottom of the V here if we use double crochet it makes this get too long too quick and the point of our work so this is the bit that sits on the front on our chest part this bit gets too long too quick and we don't get the width like it'll be long and skinny so if you do want yours longer in the middle here and more narrow a double crochet is a great stitch but I will be using the half double crochet for this one because I didn't want it to get really long and narrow I wanted it to be shorter and wider so oops I think I may have no nope, I haven't done it I've still got it <laughs> we're still on there so a half double crochet we're going to chain one and that doesn't count as our stitch for this one we're going to work three half double crochet into the middle of the ring it's going in there pulling up a loop yarning over pull through all three yarn over go into the loop pull up yarn over pull through all three and we want to do that one more time it can be a bit fiddly to hang on to this magic ring plus my hands are cold and it's not helping so yarn over into the middle pull up a loop and then pull through all three. I don't know if you can tell, but my voice is a bit nasally. <laughs> um, I had a cold last week, and I feel fine, but the nasally bit is just hanging about. So we have three stitches. Let's just zoom in slightly. We have three stitches there, and that's the first row of our cow. And we're going to chain one. And this does not count as a stitch uh, throughout the pattern at all. So I'm going to chain one. And normally in a pattern you would go into the next stitch, which is here. But for at my pattern, because we're ignoring the chain one, we actually want to put a half double crochet stitch in there. And at the beginning and end of each row, we're going to work two stitches. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into the first stitch which is here. So we're going to go once and then we're going to go back into the same stitch with a half double crochet. So on this row we've only got one stitch in the middle so we're going to do one stitch in there. And then in the end one, we're going to work two. So then we started with three, so now we should have um, three, five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Because we did two in the first one, so that's one, two. One in the middle. That's three, and then two in the end is five. I'm not going to give the stitch count for each row, but you are going to increase two stitches every row. So chain one and turn your work into the first stitch. We're going to work two stitches. And now because we did an increase in our last stitch we've got extra stitches in between so you're basically going to put one half double crochet or whatever stitch you've chosen into each stitch and then the last one is where we do our two so this is a really easy pattern once you've done sort of two or three rows it's it you start to remember it so it's really easy it's great for beginners especially if you want to practice increasing 
So we've got our last stitch here. You want to make sure you get that one because if you don't, it's going to go a funny shape. So we're going to yarn over and you can kind of see that the loop has fallen down here. Not fallen down, but it, in mine it looks like it's fallen down. So it's here and there's a loop at the back and you've got your two loops there. So that's where you want to put your crochet hook. I've kind of got to pick up that front one. Then once you've worked the first one, it'll stay there. So that's one and two. Turn your work around. If you want to do an, a different look for this, what you can do as well, you may you will need to pull out the last two rows, but instead of working normally when we do a half double crochet we go through that hole here and we go under two loops like that you could work this stitch and if you work that back loop it will leave like a sort of a railway track i don't know if i did that on the other one i don't think i did no i didn't so when you would work your half double crochet i'll just show you just something different if you want to try it so we're going to do our chain one on the first and last, we are still going to work through both loops. That gives it a neater edge. So you've got your first two stitches. And then if you wanted to try something different, go, so move it towards you like that. And this back loop here, go through that and work your half double crochet that way. It will pull up a loop like this, but it will fix itself as you go along. And what happens is, I'll just do a couple of stitches. It leaves the first, the first loop vacant, and then this loop here acts as like the second loop, and it creates like a little railway track across. It looks very pretty, but I'm just going to stick to the normal way to do it and that's going through two loops so we're going to do that I can hear my voice and it sounds so funny <laughs> so I have two stitches left there's one there and one there so I'm going to do that one and in my last stitch, I'm going to do two half double crochet. So one and two. If you're not sure where your last stitch is, what you could do is put a stitch marker after you've I'm just going to grab some more yarn after you have done your first stitch. So I know when you very first learn to crochet, it can be a bit hard to see where where it is. So we're going to yarn over, go into the first stitch, and then complete that. So what you could do is grab a stitch marker, put it in the first stitch. Oh, and if you if you already know how to do all this stuff, all you need to do is repeat the last row. I'm just giving a little bit of advice in case there's some newbies watching, which I hope there is because it's an easy project. So that's our first stitch and our second stitch goes in that stitch there. Then we're going to work all the way across. And you can see it, it increases quite fast because we're doing an increase at the the beginning and the end of each row. Each row, sorry. So we're coming up to our last stitch, which is, it's kind of hiding, you, you can't really see it, but it is there. And then we're going to work two in that last one. Chain one, turn our work. And I'm going to go back across to show the, the newer people when we can see that stitch on the end. So two stitches in the first one. And then one all the way across until we get to our last stitch just 
grab more yarn. It's the only thing when you have pulled it from the outside, you have to keep assisting it. Okay, so you can see now, see that is the last stitch, but it's, it just doesn't look like a stitch on the end there. So we're going to work into here. And you may have missed that completely, don't you think? Because if I, okay, we can see it's here, but if I take this out, it's kind of disappeared. And if you were not paying attention, especially when you pull like that, it doesn't even look like it's there anymore. So that, those two loops on the end there, are actually a stitch. And we are going to do two, because we need to do an increase. So what we want to do now is we are going to keep going until we have the head measurement that we are making it for. So I think my head is 58 centimetres. I can't remember inches. I think it's 23 inch. Might be 23 inch. But I know it's 58 centimetres. So... I'm going to keep going until this length along the top here, so along the last row that we've just worked, is the same measurement as 58 centimetres. Because if we make it smaller than that, you can make it larger, of course, but if you make it smaller than that, when we join it, we're not actually going to be able to get it over our head. And that's really not going to be much fun. <laughs> so keep going, and I will see when we're ready to do the next part sorry guys you can also pull that shut if you want to now so I was just looking at that look thinking why does it look so weird <laughs> you can pull that shut and that will bring that down to a point and you can sew in your end now or you can do it later oh I can see the yarn starting to change I don't know if it's showing up on camera slightly darker down here and it's going into the brighter green pretty so now what we have is a triangle shape and mine is approximately 58 centimeters across the top. Don't forget crochet stretches so you could make it a little bit smaller if you wanted to but just make sure it fits around your head. So now what we're going to do is put this back on our crochet hook And we are going to join, so we've got on, on our crochet hook, like if you were going to just start a new round. You're going to grab the other side, so it's just the other side of this row that we've just done. And this is really hard to show, there's enough room. We're basically going to make a circle. So we're just going to put the two ends together like that, so that you've made a circle or a tube at the top of your work. We're going to go to the last stitch, or the first stitch here, which is the last stitch of this row. We're going to go into that stitch. We're going to join with a slip stitch. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to half double crochet in the same stitch and we're going to half double crochet in every stitch around. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we are just back around and we've finished off this row. So I'll meet you when we are back around to here. And you've got two options here. We can either join to the first stitch and you're going to join at the end of every row. Well, every round, sorry. We're working in rounds now. You can join it at the end of every round, or you can half double crochet. Oh, I've got another stitch there. Let's work that one. So you can join like this. You can join into the very first stitch with a slip stitch, and then chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch, and work your way around. But sometimes you get this ugly seam, and personally, I'm not a fan of that. So I like to work lots of my projects in spirals if I can get away with it. So instead of joining with a slip stitch, we just half double crochet in the very first stitch. And by doing this, 
Now we've created... See how it just goes straight across? You can't even tell that we've joined the row. Like, that should step up here if we've joined the uh, slip stitch and do our next row. But it doesn't. It goes smooth straight across. But then when we... So after this, we're going to do heaps and heaps of rows. Uh, sorry, guys. We're going to do heaps and heaps of rounds because it's worked in a round now. But what it will do is when we finish off, I'll just show you what it will look like. When we finish off, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then slip stitch in the next. So you will have this, you can see how the, oops, you can see how the blue comes along and then it just will stop. And I'll show you on the purple one that I did. See how there's this row here and then it just comes along and stops and it just dips down ever so slightly. But when we finish this off, we're going to do it where we well, you can, you don't have to. We're going to do it where we've, we've joined it here. And this is actually the back of our work. So this part will be at the back. So where that little slopey bit is, it should be here, but I actually ran out of yarn. Where this little slopey bit is, it's going to be at the back of our work if you want to finish it there. If not, if you want to use all of the ball of yarn that you've got, just keep going until you run out. And then, you know, you may have it finish in the front of your work. But really, with this tiny stitch that we've got and it's a, it'll be scrunched up it's not like a, a flat project that you can really tell I personally will just keep going until I've used all the yarn and I think that's going to be just fine but I'm going to show you when I finish so you can see where I've actually finished off I'll pull that last couple of stitches out there so yeah like all we do now is just half double crochet in every stitch around how easy is that? So, like I said, a great beginner's project. So keep going until you have the length that you want on the neck part. So this, we've actually started just the neck bit, the cow part of it. And this is going to be scrunched up around your neck. If you've got a really b big ball of yarn or a long ball of yarn, it might actually make a cow that's way too long. So just keep an eye on it as you go. I don't think it's going to matter with this ball of yarn, but we'll see. I haven't made one in this yarn yet so I'm not sure what it's going to look like. So keep crocheting and I will see you in just a moment. So when we get to the end, this one is a lot longer. The ball of yarn was a lot bigger than, still 100 grams but a lot more meterage. I think because the yarn's a lot thinner than the purple one that I made. So to finish off, what we're going to do, I did tell you before but I'll show you again. This was a half double crochet. This is how much yarn I've got left and this is just the one ball. And I'm going to just put in two more half double crochets. Actually, no, just one. Uh, next stitch is a single crochet. And the next stitch is a slip stitch. So in and then pull through. And I might just do that to secure that one. And where is this finished off? I'm, oh my goodness, you are not going to believe where this is finished off. So I finished off there. Literally, that is the end of the ball. And that's where my join is. It's kind of... I think it's almost perfect, actually. So, oh, it's about three stitches too many. Because that's where the line's up at about there. But that's pretty close. That's so cool. It's su such gorgeous yarn. The colours are amazing. I'm sorry about the sun coming through the window over there. If I pull the curtain, it gets really dark. So it's only for the end of the video. So yeah, all we need to do now is sew in our ends, so grab your, what do you call it, your yarn needle. And I put my yarn to the back of the work, and I always sew in my ends on the back of my work. And I'm just going underneath these stitches. And then work back across, skip the first stitch that you just came out of, just here, the purple one there, and then go back through, and then that'll just um, get your yarn stuck around that purple stitch and it won't pull back through. And snip that off, that little end. 
and then do the same to the beginning tail. So once you finish it's ready to wear and this is really long but oh, it's gonna be so good in winter. It's not winter here yet. It's coming, uh, what is it? It's March so it's getting cooler but oh I love it. I love these colours. I get really cold in winter so I can see this being worn a lot and it's right up behind my neck too. Love, love, love. Woo. So thanks guys, thanks, oh my voice, hang on. <clears throat> Thank you for watching, that's better. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed this project, so quick to make up. I made this in a day, it only took me a couple of hours to do and I would love for you to share your creation on our Facebook page. Also tag me on Instagram if you use Instagram. I would love for you to tag me. I'd love to see people's projects, what they've been making. Oh, I just love this. This might be my new favourite project. I love those gorgeous colours. And also too, I'm on Patreon now. So if you can support me over there, that would be fantastic. I'll leave all the links that you need in the description box. Ooh. Where's my hand? You can see a secret project. This is a v-necked cardigan. That will be coming out hopefully the next video from now. Um, if you are a regular subscriber you will know that I had last week off because I was crook. I had planned on making that cardigan for this tutorial but I had two days and I'm, I cannot make a v-necked cardigan in two, in two days. I'm sorry. I'm not that quick. <laughs> Definitely not that quick at making stuff. So next week I gonna try my hardest to get out this V-neck card again. It's been a long time coming. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Happy crochet. Bye.